What is up guys? It's the Sound Alchemist sitting here next to Gershwan. And today we're ready to give you guys another episodic adventure into For the Greater War. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. first. That is what James has done. He says, what would happen to an inquisitor who accuses a custodus of being a heretic or the adeptus custodus? So basically what you're asking is, What's stronger, the Inquisition or the Adeptus Custodes? Mm -hmm. um, and the answer is... In terms of, like, raw power, like, physicalness, I mean, the Custodes. Yeah. But... In terms of political power and all that kind of good shenanigans, the Inquisition is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if the Inquisition deems a certain, like, whether it's, it's um, an individual custodian or it's the entire thing as heretical... I think he might get away with it. Yeah, I, I feel like the power of the Inquisition has just gone out of control. And they're hiding it behind the fact of like, we're like the emperors. We're here to protect the emperor and carry out his will. Yeah. So because of that, it's like, who's going to oppose the will of the emperor? Right. That's like opposing the will of God. Right. It's like unthinkable. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're just defenders or they're just bodyguards. Mm -hmm. Um they can have a say in like certain matters, but I don't even think they have a seat on the um, High Council or the High Lords of Terra, whatever council that is. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I we did think... we did find out that the was it the Yellow King or the Golden King? I always get the colors mixed up. Is actually a custody. Yeah, but so what it's... is he though? But he he just reigns over like the world, <laughs> the planet Terra. I, no, not Terra, but like, oh. he's like in control of like. <clears throat> his own territory so oh yeah i mean it just shows you that yeah it is possible for these guys to like rule mm -hmm. but their main objective was to protect the emperor yeah and um yeah good question mm -hmm. the inquisition i mean hands down yeah this one's by bob j what do you guys think of a new orc tribe that is dedicated and specializes in strictly fighting tyranids all of their armor and weapons would be Tyranid based. P.S. Gershwan is no more. Long live Bolitas. Yes. I think it would be cool. Um, because then they could do that for every single faction. Mm -hmm. So like a, an orc tribe that only kills chaos. An orc tribe that only kills Tau. So it's like technological, chaotic. Uh, Tyranids is like more savage. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be really cool. I mean, they are coming out with the... A new, um, is it like a sub clan or like what would you call it? I think it's a sub clan of the sub clan, so it'd be like <laughs> sub sub clan um, of the snake bites. Mm -hmm. And these guys like ride boars into battle. They're like savage orcs from fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've said this before, uh, but I'll say it again: buy savage boar boys now, because the price is going to go up. So get that, because I think it's like fifty dollars for five of them. And like later on when the rules for these new models come out, all you have to do is convert them uh, to make them look like 40K-ish, which yeah. isn't that hard. It's just adding a gun. Um, yeah, pretty much. And then, and then you save a shit ton of money. Because I guarantee you the box is going to be $50 for three, or you can get $50 for five right now. So, um, but yeah, that would, that would be awesome. And I like the way that the new models look. Yeah. The squigs are interesting. Yeah, I think that's one thing that I wanted to see more from the orcs is just more squig variants or like maybe have a squigoth that's strictly 40k and not like you have Forge to go to Forge Road and like take out a loan <laughs> to buy the gargantuan squigoth. It's like $500. I thought it was more. I mean, with tack or with uh, shipping and everything, yeah. Yeah. This next question comes from Simon. How well do you guys think the Doom Slayer would hold up in a demon world? Um, so I don't know much about like Doom and the lore. I I only played a demo for Doom, but it's essentially one guy going into like hell and beating everything. Uh, so Drago, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, and by definition, like he would do well because mm -hmm. that's what, I mean he's going into hell, mm -hmm. and that's just what a demon world is. It's hell. Right. Um, that's like saying how well would like Master Chief do if he tried to invade like the Tau. The Tau. That's exactly what he's doing. So he'd do pretty good. Yeah. Uh, this one is by Clement Albinet. Who are the best Space Marine psychers in the universe? Would you say the Thousand Suns or maybe even the Grey Knights? 
The great knights, right? Hands down. Well, they're the best when it comes to fighting chaos. Like, a lot of their psychic powers are about dealing damage to demons. Because mm -hmm. when you play great knights on the tabletop, if they're fighting demons, their smite does more. Um, however, there's other armies that you could do, like, shenanigans and make their smite just be better overall. So... I was actually going to say Thousand Sons, just because they have more versatility, and I think they'd be way stronger if they weren't just souls and suits of armor. Yeah. Like, 30k Thousand Sons, that, that was probably the strongest psychic army. Yeah, size-wise, too, because mm -hmm. like it's only a thousand uh, Grey Knights anyways, right? Right, and then you have all the different, um, I believe they're called Cabals. Oh, yeah. Different, like, psychic powers. Yeah. The legions were huge. Mm hmm So. A hundred thousand space marines in a legion. Mm-hmm. That was the norm. Next question comes from Conrad. Red Bull or Monster and why? P.S. Good answer. Dogs are better. <laughs> yes, dogs are better. Um, I don't drink Red Bull or Monster. Like, if I want a uh, pick-me-up, what I do is there's this uh, pre-workout called... I think it's Dr. Hyde or Mr. Hyde or something like that, uh, which has 500 milligrams or 600 milligrams of caffeine, which is equivalent to like two cups of coffee, I think. But that that's pretty good. That wakes me up. Yeah. Uh, back in like when I had to like stay up and do like essays and stuff for college, I never went Red Bull. I would just down monsters and I feel like they didn't do anything. Yeah, but I think you have a high tolerance towards a lot of things because you've tried things that normally would knock people out or like would make people feel a certain type of way. And then we ask you, how do you feel? And you're like, I feel normal. Yeah, like that one time with the elephant tranquilizer. Yeah, and we were at Chili's and was, Did, <laughs> do you feel it yet? And you're like, no. Meanwhile, the other guy that took the tranquilizer <laughs> was like, like, yeah, dead. <laughs> we were talking like in spirit. Yeah. <laughs> we had to do a seance. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, I drink coffee. Maybe that's why. But does that do something to you? No, because it's weird. Like, I drink it in the mornings to wake up, but then I also drink it at the at night to wind down. That's, that is weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so like I have my little cafe con pan, get ready for the night. But you have decaf or regular? <laughs> regular. Oh. That is weird. Uh, next question comes from Malik's Place. Guys, why aren't you guys doing battle reports? We would love to see them. Just a 500-point game per week could be fun. Because it takes a lot of, like, editing uh -huh. and um, a lot of work to make it look okay. Yeah. I, don't think I'm, I don't think I've ever been comfortable with any of the videos that I, that we, or any battle report that we've posted. I kind of like the narrative ones, but they got a, they got a thousand views. Mm -hmm. Back when, like, our videos would get, like, 10,000, that one only got 1,000. Right. So it's just one of those situations where it's like, I'm not going to put all this effort into it if it's just going to get... Right. And it's like, we're not known for doing, like, battle reports. So it's like... He's, like, stepping into different genres. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, like, when we play 40K, we play for fun. That's true. Usually it's not, like, super competitive. And even when it is, it's like... I don't know. I feel like these... Like, we, we're not, like, experts at, like, the rules... And like, I don't know, 40k has a, 40k battle reports are very like, you get like, you have to be on your game at all times, have a very competitive list and make sure that your opponent has that or else it's going to be a completely one-sided thing and it won't be fun to watch. Yeah. Or like you just have to be entertaining and I don't think mm -hmm. we are entertaining. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. Especially playing a game that takes like three hours, it's like... An hour in, it's like, all right, I'm hungry, man. That's true, yeah. <laughs> like, even the banter bat reps that uh, are in mini wargaming and stuff like that, they're fun mm -hmm. for a little bit. And yeah. then after a while, you're like, okay. Right. It's like sometimes they go on too long or sometimes they're just, like, one-sided and they're too short. So it's like you kind of know who wins right away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like sometimes you watch these battle reports for tactics, but these tactics don't always reflect on what you can do. Because, like, you might not be playing the same opponent. Your dice rolls might not be the same. So there's a lot of different factors that really go into making great battle reports. And the channels that do really well at this, it's like they got this down to a science. Yeah. It's like they got three cameras, a smoke machine, special effects, and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next question. This one is by Damned Legion. Can fire-based weapons stop orcs from spreading spores? 
Yeah, because even in like volcanic worlds, orcs can still flourish. Yep. Because like you can kill an orc with the flamer, but it's still releasing the spores, and not all spores are going to be caught by the flames, and they're very durable. Uh, this next question comes from Evangelium Gersh. You're talking about the prostate. Yes, that's what it is. So underneath <laughs> the bladder, the prostate, as you get older, it, it uh, actually tightens, uh, and it's harder for you to pee, and then eventually you get, um, not a disease, you get an infection in your bladder because the, the bladder just sits there, so it's waste, it just sits there. Uh, and that is another reason why if there is intelligent design, if you believe that there is a God that created you, why the fuck did he do that? <laughs> Like your prostate, he could have just been like, you know what, your prostate never seals up, and you would have been good. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Well, you know what, yeah, nobody ever gets sick. Nobody ever feels malice, hate. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, you say, what happens to Ferris Manus after his prostate closes up? <laughs> <laughs> what happens to Ferris Man Manus's body after Fulgrim sliced his head off? So it went to Horus. It was on Horus's flagship, the Vengeful Spirit, for a while. Uh, and then eventually the Vengeful Spirit made it to the hands of Abaddon the Despoiler. And now Abaddon the Despoiler has it. Or he did have it because he actually... Is the Vengeful Spirit even... Because uh, he, he used the Vengeful... No, he used the Black, the Black Spirit. Yeah, to crash. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, he's been cloned. Uh, was it... Yeah, it was Abaddon who, like, talks to uh, Ferris's skull. Yeah. He's like, to be or not to be? That is the question. Adeptus Astartes. Will the Carcharodons receive the Primaris upgrade? And if so, how will they obtain it since they are exiles who are cut off from the rest of the Imperium and have to scavenge for war gear? They already did, yeah. And how how would they do it? They're, I mean, they could be cool with some Adeptus Mechanicus tech priest who's just like, oh, let me get it for you. Mm-hmm. But first, let me get some cool tattoos. <laughs> and the point is that they're scavenging for resources. So, like the Primaris Marine res or Primaris Gene Seed is something that they could scavenge. Yeah, and if not, they could always like forcefully, like, make them do it. That's true. Next one. This one is by Gian Paolo Cesarino or Cesario. <laughs> Could a custodian beat a chapter master? Yes. Yeah. Hands um, down. Custodies are like, I would say, Primark level. Maybe not to that point, but like very close to it. They're definitely higher than a chapter master, unless it's a named chapter master like Dante mm -hmm. or Caldor Drago. Um, but yeah. yeah. Custodies, they'll mess you up. This question comes from Jamie Garth. How many expeditionary fleets were there, and how did they differ from the explorator fleets? Uh, expeditionary fleets, how many were there? A lot. And what what made them different? Uh, they were more military uh, in nature. So they would go up against like Xeno empires or uh, human empires that wouldn't, uh, that needed to be pacified. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like an explorator fleet would just be like, oh, cool, look at this planet. It has some life on it. Let's terraform it. And then they would do that. Right. Here's a swan. If you had your own vehicle from 40k, what would you want to ride? Uh, Sister of Battle. Oh, a vehicle, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but I thought of the ghost from uh, Halo. That little, like, flying thing. But uh, let me see. Vehicles in 40k. Do battle suits and dreadnoughts count? Yeah. That's a vehicle. It has the vehicle tag. It's not the uh, Tau battle suits, though. Oh, they don't? No. I mean, yeah, it's still a, some type of vehicle. It gets you from point A to point B, right? Yeah. Yeah, so in that case, I'll say a, a hammerhead gunship. <laughs> I think it's really funny that you said the Halo one when, like, that's a fucking piranha. Yeah, that's basically what it is. But piranhas skim uh, the ghosts. Oh, no. They ghosts do skim. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you never played them. No, I played them a long time ago. Yeah. Fifth edition. I think they do look cool. Um, that's a tough one, though. That's a tough question. Like, what? I'd probably do a Titan. But, like, <laughs> reasonably, how would you get around here? Oh, I wouldn't. Like, I would try to conquer the, the planet Earth <laughs> with my Titan. It's like, either you nuke me or 
I'm the new president of the world. But it's like if they nuke you, then your Titan will go nuclear and it's like two nukes going off. And the or and Earth, Earth gets destroyed. So <laughs> what I would do is I wouldn't even try to be like aggressive and like try to destroy like armies right off the bat. What I would do is I would explain to the leaders of the world, hey, like I win. Like <laughs> if you guys nuke me, the entire planet just gets destroyed. All I ask is for a brand new painted army every single day different color scheme different sept like i want to collect them all that's all you guys have to do and my my um what is it titan level cannon won't destroy the white house <laughs> yeah that's what i would do i wonder if you would have the necessary materials to actually use it yeah, because you just get hardwired in. Like, I wouldn't be able to leave. <laughs> no, but I meant, like, you, if you have just the vehicle, but not the actual, like, power source. Oh, I get what you're saying. Because it's, like, a 40K, like, material that you need. Yeah, like... Uh, like, you need, like, Ethereum or something like that. Yeah, I don't. that would suck. <laughs> Actually, I have some Ethereum. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go to the moon, guys. Like, the Titan class cannon. They yeah. can shoot to the moon, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, next question. <clears throat> uh, I have one from Wasted Millennial. No, that, that we already done that. Never mind. This one's by Chaos Sixteen Boy. If the Imperium were to find Sarah, the world that the Gears of War series takes place, how do you think the Imperium can handle the Sarans? Exterminatus? Maybe use them as a recruitment world? Make them civilized? Give the humans on Sarah. Um, given what the humans on Sarah can do as they're fighting against the swarm. I don't know anything about that. Gears of War. Yeah. They're, think of them as like, because they're like, the humans are really like strong and bulky. So think of them as like a space marine without the armor. Like that's kind of what they are. So what would they be for the 40K you're saying? Mm -hmm. I think they would just become a recruitment world and they wouldn't actually try to get rid of the the monsters that are destroying that planet, I think they would keep those monsters there because what it does is it breeds really tough. Yeah, really tough uh, recruits. Yeah. Yeah, and these like space marines would be huge because they're already pretty big and bulky, so they'd be even bigger and bulkier. Yeah. This question comes from Xavier underscore crafts. Are there any well-known assassins outside of the official assassinorum, like Xenos, Hive Gangs, etc.? Yeah, so if you play Necromunda, they have specific assassins. One of them is like a beastman. Um, I forget his name, but he's he's a thing. <laughs> um, uh, we're probably gonna get to know an assassin in the upcoming Warhammer like animated series. That's true. Yep. Yeah, um, it's, it's gonna be really cool because it deals with like I believe it's either an Inquisitor or like a rogue trader that an Inquisitor is visiting or something, and there's like an assassin sent out to kill him. Yeah. And there's also Blackstone Fortress. Blackstone Fortress has that Eldar that's supposed to be an mm -hmm. assassin. The sniper dude. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It G might be a girl. Yeah, that's your most Eldar. Like the Farseers, most of them are. Uh, Jake, LOL, 1980. Does Primaris also have scouts that have to go through some time as a scout before they become fully-fledged space marines, just like the firstborn marines? And if they do, will we see Primaris scouts right now? Because uh, normal scouts suck, and I want to deploy some scouts. I feel like we won't get um, primary scouts just because that's what the Reavers are. Yeah, Reavers are <laughs> the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, too, like, you got to remember that the Gene Seed, um, like, them installing the Gene Seed, they have to go through the line, and I think it's at the very end that they put the primary Gene Seed stuff. Uh, so, like... And it's a process that takes, what is it, seven years? I believe so. So a scout could, like, let's say you start at 11. You could become a scout at, like, 15. You just don't have all your genes aid, mm -hmm. depending on the chapter. Right. Uh, but I feel like most Primaris Marines, like, they've already, they were firstborn Marines, obviously, but they became, like, scouts, then they became heavy gunners, then tactical, and then maybe they got the Primaris, you know, crossing the Rubicon, and now they could be Reavers if they want to, or they could be... Normal Primaris. Yeah. Yeah, it's different if you became a Primaris after the fact. Because yeah. that would suck if, like, I'm Calgar, the chapter master. I became a Primaris. Well, got to be a scout now. Yeah. Got to work my way up the line again. 
This next question comes from Magic Eye. What do you think is the area of a, of space beyond the setting of 40K? Nothing. It's it's an area of space that they don't really want to talk about. <laughs> it's just the Great Void, I think that's what they call it. And it's just like, that's where the old ones uh, escape to. That's where uh, the Silent King encountered the Tyranids. And that's where the Tyranids are coming through. But it's not really like major importance to the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, like it's not some like utopian world, like some paradise, or it's like not, it's like hell or anything like that. It's, yeah. I think it's just like generic, <laughs> like nothing too crazy. Because if it is, I think they would have talked about it, or maybe it is some craziness that we won't see till like the end times. Yeah, another thing too you got to think of is like if the Tyranids are just coming from those areas, then it's just going to be a barren waste mm -hmm. because the Tyranids already consumed everything. Uh, and those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. That's right. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist. Gershwin. And we are out. <laughs>